Welcome to Vail, Colorado. I'm Greg Lewis, along with Natalie Biencevenga. This is day two of the Vail Scientific Summit, brought to you by the Stedman Philippon Research Institute. The topic is regenerative medicine, and this year's conference, the third year, is much bigger than year two. It absolutely is, and there's been an incredible amount of presenters all with their own special take on what's going on in the world of regenerative medicine. But let's look at a little recap from yesterday and learn more about the fun activities that have been going on. So on top of the amazing presentations that we've been able to see and hear all about what's going on in the world of regenerative medicine, there's also been an incredible poster presentation. And these posters are based in the research that's been happening all over the country. And a lot of them have presented at the AOSSM. Uh, a seminar that happened in Toronto recently in July, and some of our fellows and other international scholars here in Vail have won. So there's a lot to be seen and to see at this event. The gentleman in the middle of the frame of that last shot that you saw is Dr. Johnny Hewitt. He's the chief scientific officer of the Stedman Philippon Research Institute and the man behind this uh, Vail Scientific Summit. We had a chance to catch up with him earlier. Yeah, I think the Vail Scientific Summit was an idea that came up you know, maybe two years when I came here, and Mark Philippon and Dan Durava and Mike Shannon told me to organize a meeting. And the idea behind this was really to start the momentum that they call momentum in regenerative medicine, the medicine of, of the future in a way. And we had a meeting with 25 people, invited speaker, and we have probably 50 people, you know, all in attendance and so forth. But what's happened is, you know, my goal has always been, I want this meeting to become a meeting where if you don't get invited, you know that you didn't do so well that year. Because we want to invite the people who are doing cutting edge. We want to invite the people that really want to team up with us. And in 2016, you know, in, it has grown over 45, you know, distinguished invited speaker. And now this year, we're over 65. So it's exactly what I want. I want this momentum to keep growing. The goal here is to make sure that, turn that in a way, you know, I mean, Dr. Stedman has been known for 25, 30 years. His name, his legacy is right there. But for the research that we're doing, we don't have a huge legacy here. So this is a new type of, you know, science. And, and for that, you know, I think the first three summit has been very important to establish, you know, a name for ourselves. You know, I used to compare this to the iPhone 9 of medicine. And what do I mean when I say iPhone 9 of medicine? It's because the iPhone 7 right now is perfectly fine. I mean, you have everything on your iPhone 7. The iPhone 8 will be a little bit better. The iPhone 9 will be a little bit better. More hap and that type of stuff. What the orthopedic surgeon do here is perfect already. I mean, you know, if they do an ECL reconstruction here, 95% success rate. I mean, you know, I mean, it's pretty good. It's very difficult to improve upon that. But what I want, what we do is we do the medicine to give them a hedge to be different from the rest of the world. So the idea will be that, you know, okay, the ACL, you know, reconstruction, you know, uh, success rate is 95%, but it takes you a year to come back to the game. So us, we want to come in and say, well, maybe we don't want to improve on the 95% success rate. But maybe what we want to do is to cut down the time to come back to the game. And if we are able to do this, the impact will be major. So what we do here is from the gene therapy to the cell therapy to the developmental biology to the nanotechnology, we have everything here. But the goal here, what I'm asking the people when they come to this meeting, is to make sure that they make their talk in a way that can be understood by the lay person. And I want the surgeon to be in the audience, and this is why last night we had a session, you know, just on the surgeon, because we want them to tell us, okay, oh, we're doing well here, but here, this is an area that we can improve upon. Can you help us? And that's really, you know, what we're trying to do. So what, what is happening? Where, where are the challenges, and where's the most likely improvement? Yeah. The challenges is always we're developing new technology. Let's say, you know, we discover some drug now, that can delay the aging process. I mean, those drugs are being used. It's a drug is being used already for some therapies already out there, but we want to use it for a second or a different application. But the problem with this is sometimes you have side effect associated with that drug. So is there any way that we can reduce the side effect or identify new drugs 
So this is really where we at now. We are in, in a position that, you know, I want to make sure that what we're doing has a clinical application to it. Again, here we have a pipeline. We have science here at this meeting that's going to be seeing the light of day probably in 15 years from now. You have science being presented here that's going to be applied 10 years from now. But you have science being presented today that is applying, you know, you can apply it right today if you wanted to. It's just a drug being used and we're using that drug for, you know, a different application. But again, another thing that you have to understand is we have to deal with the Food and Drug Administration called the FDA. And the FDA is there to protect you guys, to protect the patient. So not only we want to do science, but we want to make sure that we are within the FDA guidelines. So this is why in the future summit now, I want to invite people from the FDA, because the best way to translate your research to clinic is to involve the FDA in the first place, to tell them at the start of your project, hey, I want to do this, and this is where I want to be. Can you give me some advice now? So like this, you know, in five years from now, you know, I don't have to reinvent the wheel and wait five to seven years to translate this research to clinic. What, what happens here in this environment of collaboration which, which you have fostered? Yeah. This is so interesting because I organized meeting before, okay, and when Mike, Dan, and, you know, um, and Mike Shannon, you know, asked me to organize this meeting, usually I organize a meeting and this is just to organize a meeting, but this time around, this summit has become the centerpiece of multiple collaboration. Just to give you an example, nowadays you don't have to be sitting in your office to write a grant or to do science. You can be sitting at a Starbucks, being on Skype, and having a great meeting with your people, and they do, you know, your work, and, and you can really collaborate. I can have collaboration with Chicago, New York, all the big hub in research. We are a small place here. So I wanted Vail to become, and that's my hope here, to become the hub for translational medicine in sports medicine. I would like that every time someone discovers something in this country that can improve, uh, you know, a sports medicine athlete somewhere, I want that the first thing that comes to his mind, I want to come to this Vail Scientific Summit. Because there, we are set up to take something from the lab and bring this to the clinic right away. I mean, in major university out there, major big centers, Stanford, Harvard, Hopkins, you know, they are great to do research, but they are not so great to translate that research to clinic. And here, what we have is we have kind of, you know, how can I say that? You have the science on one side and you have the surgeon next door. So the translation is so easy. We don't have any red tape. Everything, you know, goes smoothly. Of course, we have to follow the guideline. So I think the people recognize this in this country now, that if they want to translate this research to clinic, they want two things. One, they want the best surgeon in the world to translate this research to clinic. And two, they want the best patient in the world. I mean, if you improve muscle healing or bone healing, to someone who's running, you know, three or four days a week, you know, and, you know, nobody knows, it's okay. But if you develop your technologies and you apply this to the best of the world, the Sidney Crosby of the world or the, the uh, Tom Brady of the world, now people are going to recognize your technology right away. So this is what we want to do here. What we can offer is not only the science that we're doing, but this, you know, you know how can I say that, you know, the best or one of the best orthopedic surgeons in the world to work in sports medicine, and also the best patient. So this is a perfect setup. What can I hope for and what can I expect as a patient, as someone who's going to be on the receiving end of, of all of this? Uh, yeah. I think the most important thing for us, uh, of course, the, the athletes' sports medicine is really the, the goal here. But I'm thinking bigger. I'm thinking about aging. I'm thinking about aging related disorders. Everybody age. Nobody wants to age, but everybody age. So we're developing technology now, today, that can impact significantly the aging process. And again, people say, well, Johnny, do you want us to live for 125 years of age? The goal is not that. The goal is really to take you and allow you to age healthier and better from now on. And again, there is, we just want here in Vail, everybody's walking, running, skiing, skating. So, and this is a very, you know, uh, active community here. So what we want is we want to take those people, give them a little hedge 
to live healthier. For example, for me, I'm a runner. I run all the time. I know that I'm going to develop osteoarthritis because we're not made to run. You know, as individuals, if you pound your knee and your ankle and your hip, you're going you're gonna to develop cartilage damage. So what we want to do is we want to take something like biologics. I mean, when I talk about biologics, I talk about stem cells. When I talk about biologics, I talk about drugs that we're developing that, you know, right now can significantly slow down the aging process. And when I say the aging process, it's not only, <clears throat> it's not only the aging process. We're talking about aging-related disorders. Think about dementia, Alzheimer. People now at 50 years old get diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer. So that's a big deal. So us, we think that with our technology, we're not going to protect you from Alzheimer, but we're going to push this probably 10 years away. So if you see someone, you know, that, you know, as you know, I don't know, you're about to develop osteoarthritis because you're born with gene that predisposes you to osteoarthritis. If you develop it at 50 years of age, then you need a knee or a hip replacement. And the problem with that is, you know, at 65, you're gonna need another one. So right now, us, you know, the big deal is not to totally prevent osteoarthritis, is to delay the onset of it. So if I take someone at 50 with osteoarthritis, and with the biology that we're developing here, you know, I push this that, you know, you will need your hip or your knee replacement at 70 instead of 50. That's a huge deal. I mean, but I'm talking about osteoarthritis, how about osteoporosis for women? You know, how about, you know, dementia, Alzheimer, cardiovascular disease? So that's the goal here. So I'm thinking, you know, the technology that we're developing for athletes here, that's the main goal, can be applied for bigger scope as well. I mean, because you have to understand that sport athletes, only a small portion of this community, you know, are really, you know, you know, uh, you know super athletes, that type of thing. But all of us, you know, and some people also tell me, I'm too old to have my stem cells harvested. Or, you know what, I should have done this 20 years ago. We're never too old for that. Because I tell people, you know, you're 5, 10, 20 years younger today than 5, 10, 20 years from now. So that's the time to do it. So now we have a momentum building here that people are banking their stem cells. That's the best gift that you can give to yourself right now. And people ask me, are we sure that we're going to be able to delay aging with that? We don't know. But I can tell you, that's a very good bet that's going to help you. And again, you go and ski, you go and run, you injured yourself, then you're going to have a bank of stem cells that we can go back to, you know, to really you know, try to boost the healing process. As a scientist, you personally, and I presume that all scientists of your caliber are the same, are you ever satisfied? Are you ever saying, aha, I've done it, or is there always something more? You know, I mean, science is uh, a meeting like this make you realize that what you're doing, there is always something to improve upon. You know, we start a project, you know, with a group of people from WashU, you know, last year. And yesterday, uh, you know, Farsh Gerlach, who is the person who developed this technology, went a step above. And I realized that, you know, we have to push my team to, to do something new as well. So having this meeting not only foster collaboration, but always push you to be better. 